fighting is done in the ring, and wars are waged on the board. That's the catchphrase for the World Chess Boxing Organization. The power behind one of the world's fastest growing sports. Chess boxing is the ultimate test of the human machine. Pitting physical strength against mental agility. London, England, an iconic city filled to the brim with historic landmarks and world-famous attractions, a sightseer's paradise, and one of the most popular tourist destinations on the entire planet. London itself is home to almost 8 million people, a diverse population that has brought together cultural influences from all over the world. So it's no surprise that in such a cosmopolitan setting, New fashions and trends are always being invented and introduced to the public at large. Even traditional sports can't escape the 21st century treatment. And behind the grand facade of central London, a sporting revolution is quietly underway. Matthew Reed is one of a growing number of UK-based participants in this hybrid sport. And in his domain here on Baker Street in the heart of London, he spends his time practicing vicious takedown moves and his own match-winning strategies. Yes, this is chess, but it's chess with a difference. My name's Matthew Reed. Uh, I also go under the nickname of Crazy Arms when I'm in the ring. Uh, I'm manager of this shop here, which is the London Chess Centre, here on Baker Street in London. Uh, I've been playing chess for nearly 20 years now. Uh, but funnily enough, I only got into boxing when chess boxing became a sport in the UK. Uh, the organiser of chess boxing in England is a guy called Tim Wargar. Uh, really loved the idea of the sport, sort of combining what is a fantastic game of chess with a physical exercise that's incredibly demanding, which is boxing. I'm Tim Wargar, the founder of the chess boxing organisation, which is the charity which... Uh, overseas Great Britain chess boxing. I've been involved in chess boxing for about four years now. Um, I discovered it first when I was on a trip to Berlin uh, and I heard about this thing called chess boxing and it sounded completely baffling and I, I went along and, um, and saw a show. I was so, I was so wowed with it I thought I've, I've got to bring this to, to London uh, and that's what I did. I came back, I thought about it for a while. Um, I founded a chess boxing club at a local boxing gym and a lot of people came along and it was instant, uh, it was instant success if you like, instant, it created an instant impact. Chess boxing actually originates from a 1992 comic book in which the men of the future box on a chessboard floor. The image inspired a Dutch artist to hold and compete in the first official chess boxing bout in Amsterdam in 2003. It has since flourished in Germany and Russia and is now spreading throughout Europe and beyond. The Great Britain Chess Boxing Organization, which Tim subsequently founded, has already held several championships in the UK. Their training base here in the suburbs of London is where new initiates to chess boxing can get their first taste of the sport.
for most, it's a baptism of fire. Trying to avoid hard knocks in the ring while escaping devious attacks on the table. In charge of the workout is official chess boxing referee, Ronaldo Domingo. Um, my name is Renato, um, also Oliver Dominguez, and I've been in boxing, boxing for since I was seven. Uh, where I did the national team at a very young age. And then so I've become a world champion, junior champion twice. Then um, I went from there, then um, after the Russian kind of socialist crashed down, then the thing was quite difficult back home. And then um, I stopped working suddenly. So I started to look after my family in that way. Originally hailing from Cuba, Ronaldo uses his other skill as a salsa dancer and instructor to add an extra spring in his boxer strides. I used to do salsa because, you know, as Cuba, I used to do salsa, I mean, a lot of dancing and teaching. Ronaldo doesn't go easy with newcomers to the gym either. This new recruit is getting a real initiation into the world of chess boxing. There's no special treatment, even for people who have had no prior experience of either boxing or chess. They are expected to dive in and literally roll with the punches. This is an all too familiar scene for TV producer Rob Gillies. Rob literally dived headfirst into the world of chess boxing when he challenged himself to get into shape and eventually worked his way up to participating in an actual chess boxing match. Well, I was developing a TV show um, which I wanted to feature chess boxing in quite strongly because it's a new and quite unusual sport. And um, so we wanted that to be the focus of one episode of the show that we were doing. And um, because I had you know, a passing interest in, in boxing and always had thought it was a sport that had escaped me. I, uh, you know, I thought about taking it up and giving it a go. I played chess once when I was seven and was checkmated inside six or seven moves and then never played it again. Uh, but no, my boxing experience was, was virtually nil. Rob documented his endeavours for the camera and months later still recalls the gruelling preparations and lifestyle changes he was forced to undertake. Rob gave himself six months to try and achieve the same levels of physical fitness as a seasoned chess boxer. That's standard time for any newcomer to become proficient enough at both sports to become a real contender. Strict dieting and regular exercise became a daily part of his life. I had eight weeks to, to put myself through a rigorous training regime. Um, I started eating properly, um, cut out all fats and all carbohydrates after six o'clock in the evening. But still, it's only for a few more weeks. I'm so sick of boiled chicken. Although Rob did not emerge victorious, he gained some valuable insights from the experience. Not least of which were the marked differences in character between the players whose strength was boxing and those who favoured chess. When I first started, that's exactly what I expected to find. I expected boxers to be macho, full of testosterone and bravado, uh, and chess players to be a little bit more sedate and maybe a little bit more intelligent and respectful. 
Uh, but if anything, those two things were completely flipped. I found um, chess players to be egotistical and overly aggressive. Um, and the, if you play against a chess player who's a lot better than you, then they let you know about it. And there's no mercy given there, and they'll rub your face in it if they, if they beat you. Uh, boxers, if you step into a ring with somebody who's a lot better than you, and you stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and trade blows, uh, and you don't moan about it and you don't cry, then you know, the amount of respect you're given is immense and I found boxers to be you know the uh, the more humble and uh, and respectful sportsman. Mind games play a major role in any chess boxing match especially halfway through the bout when both strength and concentration are beginning to fray at the edges. But that's exactly the reason why so many people are becoming so interested in the sport the switch over from going from a boxing mindset to a chess mindset actually is one of the biggest challenges of the, of the sport. Um, and it's not that you are like crazed with like aggression or, or um, it's more like you've got an ad adrenaline pump going, you know. But that, that pump pumps when you're playing chess as well, believe it or not. So it's not even so much about that. It's just when you're playing chess, you're in this kind of quite a a cerebral mindset, you're, 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 sitting, you're sitting back and you're letting your mind do all the work. And if you don't switch over very quickly in between the switch over, you go out there still with that kind of, what's going on in my head, uh, you can easily get hit. And that's what happened to me in my first fight. That's why I nearly got knocked out. Back at the gym, the workout has progressed to the chess table. In an actual match, this is where an important test takes place. Whether the player is able to shut out the physical exertion of the boxing match and place complete concentration on the chessboard. Surprisingly enough, the majority of matches are actually won at the chessboard, which is why even the strongest of boxers must be equally skilled with his chess tactics. Chess boxers disagree, but for me personally, I think if you're coming from a sound, solid boxing background, you are less likely to take punishment in the ring, therefore your chess should be easier. But on the other hand, if, if you're an extremely strong chess player, then you can, your tactic will be to survive boxing and win easily on a chess. Chess boxing is a full contact sport and um, the boxing part of the event is pure boxing. Um, so from that point of view, it's a dangerous sport. Um, and it's important that competitors are, are trained and fit and ready to go in the ring because the, the mantra of boxing is that you must protect yourself at all times. So here's how a chess boxing match works. Competitors alternate between three minute rounds of boxing and four minute rounds of speed chess with one minute breaks in between to get the gloves off and hunker down at the chess table. The winner is determined by knockout, checkmate or the referee's decision. As the guys are put through their paces in and out of the ring in practice matches, chess pros like Matt prefer to keep sharpening their gameplay skills. But even for all the best laid plans, the real test of composure and level-headedness comes on match day itself. Still in its infancy in the UK, chess boxing has yet to graduate to big venues like stadiums or well-known boxing rings. But nevertheless, crowds still fill the local sports centres where tournaments are held, and audiences are gradually increasing. With intensive training sessions under their belts and countless chess strategies practised and repractised, the hardest part for London's chess boxers is the long wait before each match. Matt Reed is not yet a seasoned professional in the sport, but neither is he a novice. Knowing that chess is his strength, Matt hits the board intensively before each of his matches, practicing all the trickiest moves in the books. He is also well aware that the majority of his opponents will be stronger boxers, so must also psych himself up to facing some rough treatment in the ring. 
please take your seats for the first bout of the evening. In the blue corner, all the way from Berlin, weighing 76 kilograms, Sebastian Bersel! Uh, he was a, uh, a big talent. I'd seen him fight uh, on a previous chess boxing bout in Berlin and one over here in England. Uh, and he was a short guy, about five foot eight, five foot nine, but very muscular. And he was a bit of a threat because he was a very good chess player. He was a good club standard in Germany. He had an official rating, he played lots of chess as a child, and he got into his boxing in a big way and he was showing a lot of talent there. So from my point of view as an opponent, he was dangerous because normally I just deal with boxers that can't really play chess. <laughs> As the players take a seat for their first round of chess, they are also fitted with headphones, thereby shutting out the noise of the crowd and the announcer's running commentary. My advantage is over my opponent, um, probably my chess ability, the ability to make moves really, really quickly. Um, that's the thing about chess, it, it's done on a clock, so each player has a certain allotted amount of time to complete a game. And I like to make my moves as quickly as possible, so that I use up very, very little time. So the majority of the chess round, it's not my clock that's ticking down, it's my opponent's clock. So he's constantly under pressure, he's always on the back foot in the chess round. He's got to think and there's me relaxing because I've already made my move. So I'm kind of, in essence, stealing time from him. So as the game progresses, I'm getting through the chess rounds a lot quicker because I'm making my moves quickly. I'm getting a better position because I'm normally a stronger player than my opponent. And then all I have to do is make sure I stay on my feet in the boxing round. If, if I can stay on my feet in the boxing round, chances are I'm going to win. So that's my game plan. But Matt soon realises that his opponent's boxing skills are far more superior than what he had originally thought. His plans have gotten off to a bad start and Matt is shaken up almost immediately. Clearly suffering during the boxing, Matt has to make sure that he survives long enough to make it through to the next chess round. I tend to fight much smaller fighters, five foot eight, five foot nine, sort of around about the 160, one meter 60 mark. And seeing as I'm nearly two meters tall, yeah. I've got huge arms to keep them away. But this time, he was basically waiting until I threw what I'd regard as a lazy jab, where it wasn't coming straight in and straight back, it was more staying out there. And he would use the slowness of the jab to sort of maneuver himself in and then he'd come with everything he had. The reason why this is my favourite bout, my mo most memorable bout, is that the game plan that I came up with, which was basically to mean that I could just gradually apply the pressure in the chest gradually, make sure that I never risked losing small, small bits of pressure gradually applied. Uh, and then in the boxing, just to keep him away from me, to throw out lots of jabs and to make him think twice about trying to close the gap on me. It's the unpredictability of the sport that has made chess boxing so popular. Even the crowd were convinced that Matt would lose at the hands of the superior boxer. And yet his chess skills proved more powerful. Although it took a lot longer than I wanted to, I had to go through four full boxing rounds. Uh, I did actually win that one, so that one I was very happy with. Referee Reynaldo Domingo, himself a veteran boxer, is constantly impressed by chess boxers' abilities to switch from a purely physical game to one that calls for superior mental endurance. 
I'm a fighter, I'm not a chess, book, um, chess player. I wouldn't be able to, to fight you. Then, then the second round, sit down and play chess with you like uh, nothing happened. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but I keep my heart to this guy who do that because um, it's amazing to do that in a sport together. Matt's impressive victory and the crowd's appreciation is a great source of encouragement for UK chess boxing founder Tim Woolgar. The growing popularity of the sport and the audience's obvious enthusiasm for the matches bodes well for the future. I mean, I founded the sport and I, I've, I, I wanted to enthuse other people about that. Um, and in the first competition we ever had, I, I made it the British Championship. The title of the UK's first ever heavyweight chess boxing champion is an honour that Tim is proud to hold on to until the next chess boxing champion comes along. If you can take it from me, good luck. And, um, and that's what I'd like to happen next in terms of my own personal ambition for, for, for what I'd like to achieve. So the challenge has been officially given. If you think you've got the right combination of brawns and brains, Maybe it's your turn to step into the unique world of chess boxing. <laughs>